I wanted to film the object in a way where the, it seemed as if the camera and the light were kind of intertwined or in relation to each other. So that's why they move in unison. Hello, I'm Paul Quimet. I'm an artist from Tallinn. Hi, Paul. Nice to have you here in the uh, European Central Bank, floor 27. Now let's start with uh, maybe the idea of architecture, your interest in architecture, and um, uh, has it to do with your Estonian um, home, or is it more connected to a political event? I think the uh, initial interest grew from a work or a series of photographs that I did of the suburbia in, uh, around Tallinn. At that time, it really seemed that the, that the architecture and the built environment around these landscapes that used to be former agricultural farming lands uh, for the kolhoses in the Soviet Union, uh, that this landscape was being transformed. And it was a kind of ideological and political thing and those, those changes seem to be manifest, manifested in the built environment. These ideas were, uh, seemed quite good for exploring with photography and film uh, and with time and space and then bringing those kind of notions back into the exhibition space once the work is being exhibited. With your work, it's, I have the feeling there is more like a it's more an interest in details, it's more an interest in fragments. Is this something that interests you to go beyond documentary photography or documentary film? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I, I, I kind of <laughs> let go of the documentary aspect already some time ago. There, I started, started manipulating films and photographs that, in a, a adding things and removing things in them so that they would more be in would more uh, represent my experiences and my views of these places and buildings that were shown instead of being strictly accurate and documentary um, exposure um, the film that you have presented uh, in double feature. The main actor of that film is, a, is an object, is a sundial um, that originally um, has been made in Germany in the 17th century and still exists in, an, in, a, in a castle. Um, and you made a copy of that work. How did you um, come to that word. It was like a kind of chance encounter with visiting some friends in Germany uh, of, of seeing this object and then having this kind of uh, like a feeling of its kind of displacement in, in, in history. There's something that looked like a sculpture from the 20s maybe or 30s. Like a modernist sculpture was indeed a sundial from the 17th century. It looked to be a little bit futuristic which further enhanced this kind of idea of an anachronism. It was the fact that if we have art objects and we see them in real life, then how, how could they be described with cinematic tools to, to, to encounter them anew in a way that's maybe not possible in real life. I wanted to film the object in a way where the, it seemed as if the camera and the light were, were kind of intertwined or in relation to each other. So that's why in the film they move in unison also the idea of the of like a kind of indexicality of light the the light that is reflected from the object onto the negative in the camera is somehow still there when this this same very same negative is being used to make the positives which i show with a projector in an exhibition space so there is a kind of idea of light passing through these materials and rematerializing in an exhibition hall, in a, on a wall or on a screen. Temporal art is specific in that it happens in time and we ex experience it in time. But I also think if we 
look at a painting which that is a completely static object, then that our relationship with it whilst watching it, it's a kind of temporal experience, although we don't maybe you know recognize it as such. One of the paintings that I always try to see when I'm at the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam is this Barnett Newman Cathedral, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. It's a, the blue one, yeah. dark blue one. And if you sit there and look at it for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, then after three or four minutes, it, begin, it, it, it starts to be, become animated because you start to see new layers of blue. So that, you know, one could argue that that is already a kind of cinematic experience that has to do with time. Yeah. Maybe that has to do with my experience of things, of looking at art that I am interested in translating this, these experiences to, to films and in, in depicting art objects sometimes. Yeah. And I think it's a good choice um, uh, beyond the fact that it's that film is about time that you have chosen um, a clock, mm -hmm. so to say, to, um, to, to kind of double um, the, uh, the relation with yeah. time. Yeah. It's one of the few films where, I've, uh, where there is editing, so it's not a single shot, but there are cuts. And in that, with, when looking at this object, this sundial, it seemed uh, it was very tempting for me to try to work out different, film it from different, with different lenses uh, to create a certain sized image. Uh, and in the film, it cuts from a close up, from an establishing shot where you see the whole object, it cuts closer and closer mm. to, the, to the surface. Uh, and and becomes more, uh, let's say, more abstract or or less figurative, uh, and then and it and it starts to resemble something like a structuralist film from the 60s, maybe, and also again, hopefully, it comes to comes to uh, terms with its own materiality in that the the surface of the object and the grain of the object becomes to creates becomes intertwined with the with the grain of the film itself and tries to create a kind of new materiality that is present in in only in that film and then it cuts out again we come to an establishing shot and then the whole thing is looped Paul, thank you very much for the interview we made yes. here and for your appearance in uh, Double Feature and in Frankfurt. Thanks, thank for, thanks for having me.